self-determination, nothing like this before, that requires us to seize the golden opportunity. Recent events in Nigeria and abroad have presented to us to creatively and responsibly tackle the dangers that as a people we face right now as I'm speaking with you. Uh, therefore, this is not a time for idle posturing and grandstanding on social media. Instead, it is the time to focus like a laser beam on Biafra restoration and nothing less. Uh, we are point blank in the studios of the Republic of Biafra, government in exile. Two things. There is a government, there is exile. We are exiled, operating from extra from diaspora per se because you know i'm gonna cite an allusion as per the bible when noah after the big flood their their their, their, their vessel came to rest on what is known as mountain ararat you have to figure out if it is conducive for them to come down to settle on ground. He sent out a dove. When the dove flew out, it was not conducive. There was no place to land. He flew back. That was a signal until he sent a second one. Now we are the dove, we are hovering. That is the government in exile. There's no place, conducive place. That is why we are called government in exile. And we are the prime most interface, first among equal. And we shall be the prime mover of the revolution of self recognition as a people, as a government. And then every other one, every other one is heading toward a dead end. And we are on a one way street. And our mission, Biafra. Yes. Uh, but what I want to add to this is that I have been in this struggle for a very long time. Why am I in this struggle for a very long time? Because I want to go home. I want to go home. This is not our land. Nigeria has been expired for a very long time. Women, I am talking to you now, Biafra women. I want to use this opportunity to talk to you all. It is our children that they are killing. Women, when you lost a child, you know what it means. Men will not feel it the way we feel it because you carry a child nine months and somebody from nowhere will call him or her infidel that he or she is not worthy to leave. And when we are talking about Biafra going home, you are sitting down there. It's time for all of you to wake up, look for your home. I want to go home. And I know every woman in this America wants to go home. It is time. It is now or never. You can only go home through this Biafra in exile and let us work together so that we get our freedom. Thank you. All hell Biafra. 
I'm thanking Chukwu Kike Onyeke Rowanile for this moment opportunity to be here to see my fellow dear friends all eagerly waiting to go home as of right we must all go home it's a right Amen. there is no denial of that I believe in this republic of Biafra government in exile and i believe it is the place to be and i believe it is from here we are going to make that push into our land that no man born of a woman can occupy anymore and i want to use this opportunity to send a clear message to all the clergies in the place called nigeria to all the government officials who call themselves government officials to send a message to british government to send a message to fulani caliphate i want everybody to know that the place called nigeria belongs to britain it has nothing to do with that geographical area they have to go with their Nigeria. God frowns at your prayer when you say, God bless Nigeria. God does not bless evil. Amen. Nigeria is evil. Amen. Now think about when evil had expired. Something that is evil is already bad. Then it expired on top of it. And you are all fooling around praying for Nigeria. You are condemning yourselves. You are destroying yourself. Please, I need you to know this from today. Stop praying for Nigeria. Only pray that Nigeria should go back where it came from. That is the only prayer. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to assure Onyendu that we are going to do everything to bring him up. Sir. 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 We have taken a new turn. I mentioned. Former one has passed away. I have the mandate of more than 60 million Biafrans asking me, what next? What do you have to offer? We have come to our headquarters. Biafrans, look at me. My name, my reputation is on the line. We must get Biafra, we must go home. Yeah. And like Prince said, Nigeria is a lie. If you pray for Nigeria, I pray for lies. You just want out. I do God. I do God. <laughs> oh, Nyano. Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters of Biafra. Muamsike Ajuluchuku is here to say hello. And to also let you know, wherever you are in this world, don't get comfortable. Because we're going home. Yes, because we're going home. Yes, sir. Because we're going home. Yes, sir. One way or another, we'll have to leave and thank our guests, the countries that we've been sitting in, thank them for their service to be after. But we have to go home. Don't get comfortable. This is the time for us to rise. The country, the world is changing. And if we sit still, we will be engulfed. If we sit still and don't do anything, we will be swallowed. We will be swallowed. We will not allow anybody, any country, whether Fulani, whether Britain, whether Irish, it doesn't matter. Anybody in the world, remember something. We are one of this world. We are one of this world. And all I want you to know is don't get comfortable. Something is about ready to shake. And right here in the Republic of Biafra government in exile, we are ready. We have been ready to shake the world. Man. Don't sit still. Amen. We're not going to tolerate anybody sitting still. Amen. Amen. It's very organized. And uh, anybody who 
applies to undermine or confuse people uh, is uh, wasting his or her time. Amen. Thank you. We are bad friends and we are fighting for the restoration of my appetite. We are not fighting to exit from Nigeria. We are not fighting merely for self-determination. We are fighting for the restoration of the Republic of Biafra, a nation that existed from 1967 to 1970. It was recognized by five countries, Tanzania, Zambia, Ivory Coast, uh, Haiti. Gabon. Officially, Gabon, thank you. Officially, unofficially, by the Vatican City, by Portugal, by Spain, and some other countries. That, those countries accepted their partner. And diplomacy, that is a form of recognition. People don't know that. That's what we are fighting for. Number two, we are fighting for security of our lives and property. Most people don't know. In fact, even most bear friends don't know that Nigerian Muslim cliques have been killing our people since 1937, not 1945. That we massacred our people from 1937 up to now. And in the history of nations and people, no other group has been so massacred over such a long time, and that group continued today. Okay? So, the trouble, uh, where the problem of the Igbo is a very, in, very unique in the sense that we are not wanted. After the massacre over the, over the years. So it is our obligation as human beings to stop the killings, to find a place of security, to find our own country, to have our own country where we'll be free to live according to the traditions and the cultures of our ancestors. So that is why we are we are fighting for fire. We are fighting for thirdly, we are fighting for fire. Right? So that um, our people, the ego, and other people who believe in that work, will have the opportunity to develop themselves to the maximum. You see, the ego don't know it, but they are a very special people, endowed by God with incredible talents, human and material and natural resources. They even build pyramids. They don't just try to hide it when they saw it. They didn't want people to know that the people they came to civilize were indeed more civilized than them. The Ibuku bronze works have been found to be superior to those of Europe about 500 years in terms of technology and in terms of sophistication and science. By 500 years, we are ahead of Europe, technically and even scientifically. By the of the period of those of the period those of uh, Ife, okay? We need Biafra to, to develop this talents further. And you know, we need the two or three years before the Biafra war. Who said, it, who said we became the most technologically advanced nation in the world? We did our own tanks, our own guns, our own bombs. We did it great. We fitted the uh, planes and tournament bombers and fighters. That talent should not be allowed. So 
basically, that's I believe that's what why we are fighting for Forbes Africa. But specifically, we need Nigeria has failed woefully, both under British colonialism and under Hausa Fulani dominion. was Rike, who many of us have uh, really criticized. He was the first man, at least, to come out and put up the Biafra flag. Because uh, during the war and toward the end of the war, he carried the Biafra flag. So he carried the Biafra flag, somehow legal within Nigeria, even though he made mistakes. Yeah? So without all those who have made contribution to what uh, sacrifice was the Biafra uh, restoration uh, project. And um, as we very well know, People have given their money, they have given their time, they have given their resources and all the things. And uh, the Igbo are known as the never been ruled people. In a speech that Zeke gave, I think September 25th, uh, uh, 1949, in a about that people. You're going to seek self determination. Again, he said that in the history of Africa, the Igbo are the only people who have never been conquered by another nation. Okay? The houses were conquered by the Fulani. The Fulani conquered the Yoruba. But the Igbo have been, never been conquered by another African. That's what they are called the never be rooted. It is in our nature not to allow another man in our lectures and our DNA. So what I'm trying to say here is that we have we, we have not we have failed to understand the impact of that our nature of DNA. That were the people who are uncomfortable. Okay? So Thank when you. so when Britain came and took over Nigeria, we're the ones who drove them out. The Igbo, the and the Igbo organized and drove them out. Okay? Today, we have overcome this level the on the point. That's why they use their hands man, to go and destroy our farms when they saw that we are growing our own food. Now, when it comes to saboteur, that becomes the same answer that has gone on to destroy all the efforts we're making. But this is the no going back move. This is a no going back move. Those who have been saboteurs, you are going to hear from us. Part of the problem are people do not know the history. They took the history out of your school. They don't want you to know your past. Those who don't know their past bound to repeat it again and again. We are here to educate and let our people know that there's no in this entire life till eternity there's not going to be any time that Nigeria will ever the fire 2014 in this storm. if you do not believe me how many of you have been out of jobs since 20 years you graduated look at your roads you have been obedient don't want you in Nigeria to leave your own fatherland. We just want you to be a slave there. We don't want you to be independent because they need you to survive. So we have no other option. We know you have been out there on social media. Some Biafrans are confused literally and they need to know why there seems to be different Biafra governments in exile. What do you have to tell them? Thank you very much, dear friends. Uh, this question is very appropriate uh, to make some clarification. Uh, first of all, my name is Emeka Livingstone. I'm a preacher of the gospel. I've been in the ministry for years, ordained in Church of God Mission. Uh, I joined the Biafran struggle in nine, uh, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. 
And when Nambikan was still talking, and I spoke until, unfortunately, he was abducted and renditioned to Nigeria. So when the DOS failed to live up to expectation, we gathered together and uh, relied on somebody to help us out. And he started, and we trusted him to do something. That was when IPOB autopilot was uh, came into manifestation. It had been in existence by pronunciation by Onyendo himself. And so when uh, we started, we thought everything was going to go fine. Why I say this is very expedient to answer this question and very necessary because somebody asked me this question two nights ago. What were you doing all this time? when things were going wrong, autopilot, IPOB autopilot. So we thought, we found somebody who was straightforward, sincere, and committed to the movement from the beginning as he was talking. But as time progressed, we began to notice things that were going contrary to the spirit of the program. And therefore, it became expedient for us to intervene and try to change the narrative, bringing it back to the original status quo, as Onion who said before he was abducted. And when we found out that there was a total deviation from the spirit, the purpose and motive of the Biafran struggle, we confronted uh, our spokesperson then and asked him, say, look at what is going on, what is your take? Now, we expected him to have either ignored or told us, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Because he apologized to us. Chris was with me in the panel when we called him, and two others. And we're question, or three others were questioning him. So he confirmed that there was a mistake somewhere, which they did. He was going to correct it. But instead of going to correct it, he went out on air and began to, you know, disparage us and say things that were wrong. Uh, we tried all this while praying, hoping that he might change, and there was no hope. So that's why we came out as the accountability group. They named us accountability group. Now, accountability group does not operate as a member of IPOB autopilot. No, but they are members of IPOB. The autopilot group, the spirit in which we started, that was sincere and truthful, along the line there was a deviation on that spirit. That's why you are seeing all these problems and confusion and every effort to try to showcase one or two things that either it's just for window dressing or maybe for anything to prove a point. And so right now we are telling the Africans we have a better deal. Now in respect to governments, there are so many governments of Biafra in exile. So it was pertinent for us to identify with the real one. Now, when you look at the autopilot that uh, the Biafra Republic government in exile that was recently formed about two months ago, if I'm not mistaken, or beyond two months ago, there was never a country like that that existed. There was nothing like that. It just came out as a child that was born, not out of necessity, but out of personal ambition. Because already we had the Republic of Biafra government in exile, which we all were aware of. And we had been told that there existed, there was a prime minister or something like that. And we had expected to see, as we have been promised. But eventually, um, there was a kind of movement that tend to double cross the whole process to bring in something new, which really was not in tandem with what we believed in and based on what, on what Onyendu had said himself. If you look at the story being given here by the Reverend, uh, doctor here, he's saying that Ikemba was here and they had a, an office in Washington, D.C. And he's giving them accolades for a job well done. Now, what are the things to look out for? Because we are trying to identify with the real, real work. There was this one that uh, Tony Wissi operated, which we don't believe in it. That is pro Nigerian and obedient and stuff like that. We don't work with such people. Remember when he came out on Facebook, they declared him the line of the tribe of Biafra. I personally criticized him and told him the line of Biafra is in detention. Jesus only got his name because he went to the cross. That's why his name became very effective. So why would you be enjoying and the man who is paying the price in detention, the line? So we rejected Tony Wissi outright. Now, there was another one that existed before. After looking at all, this is the one that we know is the Republic of Japan government in exile. 
So we have to identify with them for so many reasons. One, you look at the caliber of people that constitute a government. They are men that have credibility. They have served this nation credibly and retired with honors. That's number one. Number two, if you look at it, it's a very physical structure that is really in existence and sustaining it has not been by the Biafran people contributing. No, they pay the price themselves to show that they are committed to the Biafran project. That's, that's, that's sacrifice. Then number three, as to why you came to join them, you come to, come to meet with them. This uh, government has been in existence and is recognized by the uh, government of America in the sense also that Biafra is captured in the census database of America. So whenever you they ask you a question in the questionnaire and you write Biafra, it pops up. So that which they are trying to bring now is not the Biafra we're talking of. And if you see what constitutes it, it's lies, deceit, hypocrisy, and uh, fraud, scamming people. Doing things just to do window shopping or try to bamboozle them with certain shenanigans that we cannot identify with because we are too old for such things. We are trying to lay a foundation tomorrow. Which when we die, our children will come to our grave and plant flowers. Thanking God we existed at the time we did and did was what we're supposed to do. God is with us in this thing. God is going to give us Biafra. No single man can give us Biafra. We believe in God while we make our preparation. So, Dr. Felix Onise, we want you to talk to Biafra. Once again, uh, fellow Biafrans, uh, thank you for the patience and the audience you have given us. I am here to let you know uh, what I call the chronology of evolution of the government in exile. Now, what happened here, I'm going to summarize without too many details, because it's a lengthy thing that began early August 2022. We were informed by a very credible source from the US government that what we need to do is to form a government in exile because the reason why we are not getting any type of audience from existing governments and international organizations is because we don't talk to groups. We have many groups. And also said we should form this government within the Washington DC metropolitan area, which includes Oxford Hill, Maryland. And that we should have a fiscal house office manned by a human being with phone number that people can reach anytime to get information. So that we came back and then we began to call on all the other pro Biafran groups we know at the time. Um, the numbers may vary by plus one or two. I think about 11 or 12 groups showed up initially. And when they showed up, we tendered this message to them that we are asked to form a government in exile. We need everybody to come together so we can form a government. When we got together and presented this, um, three groups left that they uh, were not going to participate. One is, uh, I'm not going to mention his name, who represented IDOB, led by Mazina Nikaro, and the person was one of the coordinators here in the US. And then uh, the World War Congress Secretary was there, and also he declined. And then uh, somebody else from the customary court group, the main group that was there, and get the price. So at the end, we had about eight groups that left to form the government. And there were some members of IPOB who came and attended that meeting, and they said that if the official person for IPOB left, they were going to stay as an individual, as not representing IPOB to form the government. So when I had and formed the government, and then um, 
lo and behold, um, Dr. Uday from UK, who lives in the United you know, in the Britain, in British, you know, then he said, no, that we're not going to form any government, that they already have a government in existence, but I will encourage our audience at this time, if you have pen and paper, please take a note, because I'm going to mention some acronyms or abbreviations that may be confusing. So the government there, he said they had a government called Biafran Government in Exile, B-G-I-E. And the government has been in existence since 2007, that he is the current prime minister, and he succeeded the founding prime minister, Professor Inobachi. I'm not going to go through what I spoke with here, Professor Inobachi a couple of times, personal we got information from and the credible information that told us to form a government we have another people that advise us not everything that i've said here we are in the public place and uh, they told us that those of us uh some of us should not be the face of the government but of course we adopted the public and evil way where we don't have any possibility say this person is the face of the government so we're looking for the face of the government now, Dr. Today insisted that we must all line up and form and join his government. They are like, how we are going to join a government no human being has ever heard of since 2007. The only people that say they have heard of the government are people there, but three or four people who were in the meeting who said they were his cabinet members. And then the question I asked him, how come this government of all the program people killed Mazen and the Kano rendition, women raped our villages and the markets burned? There was no single press release that was released by this so called government to decry or condemn what was happening. The two major duties of any government is the security of their people and the welfare of the people. Nobody had about you and you've been in existence since 2000 and I mean since uh, 2007, more than 10 years. So the people present from different groups unanimously told you we are going to form a government we do not know this government. So he, by the way, he left the, the, the meeting, he voted out of the meeting. And then subsequent meeting, we came back to continue. He was came back on that meeting, second meeting. Then he also voted out and asked his um, cabinet members, a couple of them with him left. Then we moved on. At this point, I spoke with him privately. In addition to his government not being in existence, we never knew what it was or anybody knew about it. He said, quote unquote, that Britain is not an enemy of Biafra, that he's fighting for Biafra and not fighting Britain. And then that Biafra government, contrary to what our credible you know, advice was told of, the African government can be located in any country in the world, including Britain, wherever the Prime Minister you know, lives. So, so what we did was we went ahead and formed the government. I want to point something out here important. I went to Wikipedia and obtained the official name, which any of you can go and check. That is said here, that's what the country, the name with you. And so his government, legally was not even the government of the country that we had. So we moved on with the Republic of the African government to next time. Then, I'm not going to go into more details. Then, we unopposed Mr. Nwisi, who also is in UK, which um, our special guest here mentioned, became, you know, Fraudulently, we speak now. I'm the one that interviewed him. He became the president of that Republic of Japan government. Again, take another note. The acronym of that government is ARO B 
G I E, which is the name that I obtained and show that is the correct, correct name of the government of what to do, you know. Now, now, Tony Winsy, we unanimously voted him out. I'm not going to go into more details what happened, but you have to trust us that Tony Winsy, in retrospect, in retrospect, we found out that he has never participated in any way at all in the restoration project or funding Biafra has never put a dime anywhere, never belonged to any group. We somehow the city one go this way here. And of course, we moved on. And when we moved on, we retained our appropriate name, the public of the Afghan government in exile. And our own acronym is R-O-E-P D D I E. So you have seen somebody somewhere that has used the videos of Wincy on that name to make it look like we are the ones doing it to be and doing the uh, 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 video. It's not us. I will stop at this time and have our you know our next speaker to talk more on this. But I want you to know that this government B B I E is out in the UK. We cannot fight their enemy from the out. Britain is our number one enemy. Is the architect of all our nightmare. The millions that have been killed and continue to kill. So people must know that. Of course, do not forget that our lovely, intelligent brother, highly successful governor, Mr. Obi, before he decamped from BDP to Labour Party, he went to Britain. He dined with the Prime Minister. Don't forget this important thing. We are a government. We have intelligence. We look at everything like any other government. He went there to Britain. We don't know what he went for. So when you are obedient, which country is he going to be the president of? Is he going to be better allowed, like Jonathan Goodlaw? Why can't we wake up? Why can't we understand that at this juncture, we have only one option and no other option, and that is Biafra. Like the last person said, it's not about me anymore. It's about you, the future generation, our people, the people that is out of envy and jealousy. So we haven't done anything to anybody. What God has given us in our land is why we are being checked. But we are going to stand firm like many people have said here god does not leave his own alone you all are the problem not god like somebody said you are praying for nigeria what nigeria has done for you why that told you she wants to go home like any millions of your friends scattered world world wants to come i'm very happy to be in your midst today and uh, it's my pleasure, and uh, I'm so, so glad for all the good job you people are doing for bringing us in this point that we are today. I don't have so much question to, to ask. Rather, I'm very happy for what you people are doing. And uh, most of the things I could have asked as a question have been asked already. So, but um, all what I have to say tonight, because it's already night where I am, maybe it's afternoon where you people are. Mm -hmm. So is that Biafrans should listen very, very carefully to what the elders and uh, what the Republic of Biafran government in exile are saying. Because this is the time we have to really come together to encounter whatever we are facing today in Biafra. We have to come collectively. So this is the time our elders have to also listen to the young ones because um, maybe we have some right directions on how we have to achieve this goal. 
this common goal that we all have been pursuing. Our leader, Onyenduma Azin was adopted and renditioned to Nigeria. And uh, most of the elders we have in Biafra land keep mute. And we, the younger generation, are not happy about that. So that is why when I come, when I come across this um, group of people with a Mecca living stone, I was very, very happy that um, I could see people who are still truthful, who can still stand firm and say that um, they are standing by the path of the truth. So this is why I decided to be with them and let's fight this just cause together. So what I have here today is just to plead to all of you that um, we are your children. You are the government. You have set the pace. If you will give us the opportunity so we can share ideas together to move this very struggle forward because we have a lot to share with you people as our elders, and uh, we are ready to work with you people as our elders, our fathers, and we are ready to do anything that you people support us to do in this very just cause for us to be able to achieve Biafra. Now let's talk about government. What is government in the first place? I give that to you as an assignment to look up the meaning of government. And then there are types of government. Now this one is government in exile. We are not the first among others. There was the state of Israel. They had a government in exile. There were others before us. So now, Republic of is different from Republic. You understand? The Republic of Biafra was founded and headed by His Eminence, I should say, General Odmegu Ujuku, <laughs> and was supported by all sons and sundry. Yes. Foreign countries. Recognize we had a system, we had our currency, we had our defense, police, judicial system, the, 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 the cabinet, name it. And so that government was not a cabinet system, it was not fashioned after British style of government. Britain runs a cabinet system of government, wherefore they have a president, they have a king or a queen. Now, in the style and fashion of Biafra, we are a republic of Biafra. And then because, like I, I mentioned before, we are in exile, because we cannot go, it's not conducive for us to settle. The government is formed in exile, so that after the road is cleared, we go home and form a standardized government mm -hmm. and governance. Yes. Like you have Republic of China. There's difference. Republic of China. Republic of China, Republic of India, Republic of this, Republic of that. I am here to hear China Republic. Just the other day I heard someone say, hey, if you want to be a dear friend, you got to be my way. My way, or the highway. My way, my way, my way, my way, my way, or the highway. This is the way to go. You know what it is. When your enemy turns around to congratulate you, that means you have done their bidding. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. That was irony, should I say? You know, thank you for you know showing the light for us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, our leader, our leader never said he's a prime minister. Biafra does not run a kingdom. Biafra is not a kingdom where you have a prime minister. You understand? Because you got to have a king or a president. You understand? We don't run that. And somebody doesn't jump, just jump out and arrogate to himself the position that is unbefitting to him or his group. 
Look at the caliber of men that are seated here in this uh, half, a reverend gentleman here. Could you imagine within yourself when this man goes out to speak? What caliber of people that will listen to him, pay yes. attention to him? Yes. Let's say we want to send somebody out there. Who are we going to send? An agro packed out? That's who is going to lead you. Look at their utterances. Look at their writings. Look at their um, 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 what, this, um, social media uh, handles and all that. Mm -hmm. Look at what they write. So, brave friends, if you listen to my song, pat on my shoulder, pick up your weapons, and follow me. Thank you. Just the other day, I heard someone say, hey, if you want to be a dear friend, you got to be my way. My way, or the highway. My way, my way, my way, my way. My way, or the highway. This is the way to go. This is the moment to unite. Uh, we find ourselves at a juncture in the history of this struggle that we have never been before. The Queen of England is dead. And Amen. we're not gloating over her death, but nobody lives forever. 3.5 million uh, beer friends and counting that uh, she will meet there when she goes uh, to wherever she is going. That's number one. Number two, military rule has come to an end in Nigeria. All of those who have held us down for 53 years, they're all gone, completely gone. They can't hold us down again. So this is the moment to strike. This is the moment after 53 years in the wilderness to get Biafra. So we cannot let any conflict in Nigeria now go to waste. Those on ground zero helping them, they are no longer there. Prince Charles is not interested in maintaining an empire that he's not capable of maintaining. When, when you go to the city of London, uh, Pakistani immigrants have taken over that place. And the prime minister himself is from India. So this is the moment to strike where the iron is hot. And we have to come together. We have to show seriousness. We have to show responsibility and discipline. Yes. Uh, this is not what we do on Facebook. I'm not minimizing Facebook. I salute those who have spoken very eloquently. Our guests, you are remarkable. Again, the church has to come in here. I'm very happy we have Father Norum distinguished in this struggle. They should no longer pray for Nigeria to be together. They should pray for God to dissolve Nigeria. Just like the last speaker said, the Red Sea had been parted. God has already opened the Red Sea. It's now for you to march through. I want to um, log on to what um, Dr. Onyise said, clarifying a specific nonsense that was flagged up on social media. Dr. Onyise clearly made it obvious that the republic or whatever thing uh, exile that was flagged up as supporting obedient was not from here he made it clear and he even pointed you to number 10 downing street and said that before peter obi moved from pdp to labor party he went in to speak to Prime Minister of Britain and that that was a bad sign. So the Tony has ex ex expressed and made it obvious that what the stupid idiot that flags himself as Prime Minister was talking was rubbish. He was not referring to this house, this divine house that God has brought to enable Biafra to come through. It wasn't this place. So all you have is the idiot speaking from wherever he speaks from, okay? Walking in cahoot with the dead Nigeria. And they're looking to resurrect a dead place, a place that is dead, that's what they are doing, okay? Now, let me make it clear to all beer friends. Now, we are talking about autonomy. 
autonomy of man. Now, if you don't understand the word autonomy, then you don't understand why we are here, why we are saying, this is Biafra. God gifted man autonomy from source. No man is greater than the other. God gifted each unique talent, unique ability, and then coupled it with what we call limitations so that we can collaborate, so we can co cooperate, and so we can complement with one another. Now, I want to let dear friends know that we are ready to take our autonomy. It's a thing of right. You don't wait for somebody to give it to you. Yes. It is yours. Now, we're asking all the criminals to leave. Katrina Lang, British government, or whatever they call themselves, we can only collaborate with you. We can only partner with people that want to partner with us. Nobody can run our lives because we don't intend to run your life or anybody's life. Biafra is here now. Biafra is here to stay. Nigeria died a death of never resurrecting again in 2014. It's already dead. Yes. So if you're saying any prayer, only say a prayer to bury Nigeria. Amen. Not Amen. for anything else. Otherwise, you'll be cursed by Chukwokike because you are trying to drown God's own people. So to all my dear friends, you are not doing anything wrong. You are in the right. Anybody in the right is with God. And anybody with God is majority. I think I would like to summarize and conclude my today's participation by emphasizing that B.R.O. GIE Biafra Republic Biafra Republic is not has nothing to do with the Republic of Biafra the Republic of Biafra country has existed documented is everywhere as it has, you have had had everything it was suspended not defeated or surrendered there's no such document you find anywhere that Biafra surrendered or that was defeated. We are restoring that that existed and was suspended. Biafra Republic government, Biafra Republic is a brand new country that has no existence anywhere in the world. However, anybody has right to find their own country, which it looks like this was a country founded by somebody. But don't be deceived because it is of utmost importance that you understand this deception. The Republic of Biafra and Biafra Republic are not the same country. Check with your lawyers. The Bible warns us that the evil one manipulates the true words of God to deceive. So has one had manipulated the true name Biafra to deceive you. Be wise and know how to spend your irreplaceable time to watch and listen to a deceit and put your money, you hardly, you, you earned your hard earned money in the hand of a deceptor. This is very important. Go ask your lawyer. Biafran Republic is not a country. You can find Biafran restaurant. You can find Biafran bank. You can find Biafran hairdressing salon. You can use the name Biafran. So somebody has manipulated. Just like Satan manipulated the word of God to Jesus Christ, deceive Jesus Christ during the temptation. Go read it. Your Christians, Biafrans, please. That's why the young man say elders. We're not elders by chronic age, by the way, only. We are elders by the Ndibu Sonyo Gaga Konisha one if no ufe ufe behama. We have read, we have participated, and have taught the white man 
And the white man listened to us today. Why can't you listen to us? The role. A lot of people out there is like, uh, eh, one a day since. Why I never knew, nobody hear about Ona? Eh? Eh, no, no, no. Now you're hearing about us. Open your ears, open your eyes, and look within. And then you will see all that has been hidden from the wise and the prudent were being this time around revealed to the babes and the suckler. Yeah, friends, there is no replacement for him by ambitious and selfish person who has projected himself as a prime minister of Biafra, hoping that Onyendu will die and he will take mm. over. There is no replacement. Yes. Onyendu will come out. Amen. 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 Number two, anybody vowing to covenant with Satan to get Biafra is an enemy of God. He is hereby rejected. Yes. Number three, BGIE, RBGIE, BRGIE are all fake. Absolutely. <laughs> From Republic of Biafra, which existed, REBGIE was formed in America here. And this is the place where we are staying. This is the Republic of Biafra government in exile. Republic of Biafra stayed in the time of Ojuku, and since it was suspended, the Republic of Government of, of uh, Republic of uh, the um, Biafra government in exile was formed as a continuation and a resurrection of the Republic of Biafra, which Ojuku was the head of state. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yes, this sir. one has been formed, registered, and is here as the only authentic rallying point for Biafrans to gather and see their dreams fulfilled. Yes. Number four, Biafrans have a project to succeed and bring Onyendu out and get Biafra. Mm. Join us. Uh, the question of confusion among the Igbo and Biafran organizations. Um, as you very well know, uh, people have always said that the Igbo cannot work together. Mm. Mm. But as a lie, the other thing many of us have failed to realize is that the enemy, since the end of the Biafra War, has been very successful for the first time in our history to plant enemies within us. Yes. That is responsible for all the confusion yes. mm -hmm. because you find in Igbo and Biafran organizations. Yes. I think we have reached a stage now when we have to flush them out. Yes. First, if we are going to move forward, we must identify them and flush them out. Yeah. Okay? That is very crucial. Mm. But to do that, mm -hmm. um, because if we don't do that, we're not moving anywhere. Okay? Yes. Okay, yeah. and I'm very glad to hear uh, many of you talk about it, and um, and uh, many of you here who, from what I have I've met the first time I meet many of you, but I'm very glad mm -hmm. to have met you uh, from the way you 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 spoke, that you are men of um, of, of uh, high credibility Team caliber. and of character. Yes, that's what we need. And that's the way our ancestors were, mm -hmm. who spoke out the truth and damned the consequences. Mm -hmm. That's what we need at this stage of um, uh, Biafra restoration. One final thing we've got to do, I was asked that question, I didn't answer it. Mm -hmm. Why have we not made the progress we are supposed to make over 53 years? Yes. Even though in the level of consciousness, well, we have done some good, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know what's really care or they've done some good. But the crucial thing is we have not done what other liberation movements who have been successful have done. Mm -hmm. Whether the Jews, the South Africans, the South Sudanese. I worked with the, uh, the South Africans very closely and the Southern Sudanese very closely, okay? And even though people are afraid to talk about it, that uh, thing is, um, we don't have uh, a military wing. 
We have never had one. ESN is not one. VLA is not one. Okay? Until we do that and do what military wings are supposed to do, hmm. the Americans will come looking oh, for us. Me. And the world will come looking for us. Until that is done, my, my brothers. And I think we can do it. Amen. And uh, by the grace of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One. We are at a truce position. No victor, no vanquish. North Vietnam, I mean, North Korea, South Korea uh -huh. are at a truce from the war that they have fought. They have never been a winner. This is why North Vietnam has been preparing, preparing, and preparing ever since that war came to a neutral agreement. Yes. Biafra, we are in a neutral position. So wherever you are, you must come out. Come here to the Republic of Biafran government in exile. We're here yes. for you. Yeah. We need you. We need you. We want you. Amen. Amen. We must see you in person, Amen. wherever you're hiding. Amen. You know, some people are just walking on Amen. Nigeria. But the Okwonundibo and Biafra, they don't know which way, which to, way go. to go. Yes. Well, come on. Yes. Come over here. On the come, they walk, sit, uh, they're not a barbed wire one. Because if it was a barbed wire one, <laughs> they, they, they'll make a decision. I need all my dear friends to know that all the evils happening in Igbo land and across that contraption, including the evils of Simon and Eba, is because of that entity, Nigeria, nothing else. It is that entity, Nigeria, that is dead and poisonous, that is creating all this madness. So I need people to understand it. So we must do away with that entity to get rid of what these nonsense you're saying. Now, just one last thing. Remember, Onyandu Nandekano is still being held by the same Nigerian contraption and the British government, because they're the ones holding him there. Head of the slack. I need you to understand this. They are holding him there because they don't like the name of Biafra. They don't want to hear it. But suddenly, Nigerians are applauding a prime minister of Biawe. That tells you that this guy is working with them because they are now hailing him for a name they hate to hear about, for a name that cost. The, detention, the legal detention of our true leader. They are calling this man prime minister. The same people that they, they don't want to hear the name Biafra. The same people that are holding Nandekano. Can I say to all of you that are calling Simon my prime minister, you are all the real criminals. You are the ones so that are sitting on Biafra. But we, are... we believe every Biafra organization is unique. Therefore, do your thing, but come so that we may have that unifying force to go after our common enemies. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Via. If you are here in the metropolitan area of Washington, D.C., 50 miles radius, we are asking you to come on board because it's a stone throw that you can walk in and have a dialogue, a conversation with your brother. <laughs> Freedom.